we have our user model to store information in our database. So we can continue on with our router here, in which case we have the route here for sign up and it would hit these middle, uh, this validation middleware. And then once it validates everything and everything's good, there's no errors, we will finally reach this point here in which we want to create our sign up controller. So this would be the final point of the route that would receive the request information coming from the user and then we can do further processing which would entail also the the uh, going to our database and retrieving data or posting data updating data and whatnot and for this one for sign up i'm going to call this one sign up controller I'm going to have to create a directory, a new directory here. Let me bring this here. Inside a root directory, and I'm going to call this controllers. Okay, so let me exit that window here. So we have the controllers here, and the first file I want to create within my controllers folder is one called auth.js. So this file would be anything related to authentication, control, uh, controllers related to our authentication, such as our sign up and sign in. Okay, so we have our controller here, and we are gonna create a function here, exports, and it's gonna be sign up controller. And it's gonna take the request response Okay, and we are gonna console log here for testing purposes, request, uh, request body. So the request object has a body pr uh, property which stores all the information coming from the user. So this is just so we can test it out that we see that we arrived to this controller and that we console log this information. Um, but before we get there, Okay, we brought it here into our route. We have to we have to import that. So require and this is the inside our route. So we have to go back one directory and then go into controllers and then auth. And what is it inside this file we want to pull out? It was a sign of controller, right? Okay, so now we have this, we pulled it out here and we can now use it inside the route. So you, we don't have any errors here. Okay, so now we have that ready to go. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna click sign up. And this is just gonna hang because we're, we're not gonna send back anything. But here in our server console, we see that we, the body object is output is displayed here, okay? The username, email, and password. Okay, so we arrived, so we are inside this controller here. So it's working. So let's delete that. So now, let's go ahead and, okay, so we set up the controller. So the next thing is we want to destructure the incoming user data. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is inside our controller, we're gonna do it like this, and request body. We want to pull out all the data that we're re receiving from the, uh, from the front end, username, email, and password. So now we can use these directly later on Okay, so let's mark that off. We destructured the incoming user data. Now we want to check if the use if email already exists. Okay, so continue on with our sign up controller. We want to do a try catch block. Try catch. 
gonna console log here. I'm gonna do a sign up controller error. I'm gonna pass the error object here. Okay, so here, what was it again? Okay, check if email already exists. Okay, so now we can, remember last video we had set up, we had created our user model. So we can start making requests to, to that model on the database. But in order to do that, we have to bring in the model here. So I'm gonna do user re require, and we're inside the controller. So we have to go back one directory inside models and then user okay so we're going to start this off by we're going to have a variable called user and this is going to and almost forgot here this function here this controller is going to be an asynchronous function so we're going to do async here And then here we're going to do await. We're going to start making our call to the database to make a query, await user. And we're going to do find one, find one. And what is it we're going to do? We're going to find email. So this right here, we're doing find one because we are checking to see if, if email, this email, well, actually, let me do it like this. Let me do email, email. Okay. Within our user model, we are checking to see if this email coming from the front end, if there's a match for an email property in our user model. So saying is so we are checking if there is if there's a match. If there is a match, then that means that that email exists already, in which case we have to, that's considered an error because the user signing up, they shouldn't, the, the, there shouldn't be the same email. So in that case, we want to send them back an email to say that the email already exists. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. But of course, because these are the, it's the same, the, it's spelled out the same, the, the, the email coming from the user and the email property that's in the model, right? Over here, let me do this here. Remember when we created our model, it was also called email. So because they are the same, we can actually just emit this like this and just do it like this. Okay, so now let's do a conditional check to see if that user exists. So if user, meaning we got the email or that email exists already. We're gonna do response or return response status 400 JSON, send back a, an object and we're gonna do error message and we're gonna say you, oh, email already exists. Okay, so if there's not an email, if there's not an email that already exists here, then this block won't even run. So we'll just continue on and we're going to start prepping our data, our, our, our input, our, the data that arrives from the front end so we can set off to the database. So Oh, but let me go back here. Check if email already exists. Okay, we check that. Create a new user instance. Okay, so we're gonna create a new user instance. I'm gonna do a variable, call it new user, and I'm gonna do new user. So we are creating a new instance of our data, our, our, our user model. We're creating a new instance of this right here. And that's why we put new user. Now we all want to do new user dot username. We want to give that username the value of 
username that's coming from here, right over here. And also let's do the new user email and email. And then now for the password, we have to make some preparation for this. We are not going to store the password that's arriving from the user just as is. That's a security issue that you don't you don't want to make the password. If somebody breaches our database, the database, you don't want the user's password there in the open just like like as is. Instead, we have to hash that password. Okay, so we that's what we're going to do here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a library called bcrypt.js. So I'm going to mark this off first. We create a new user instance. And that's right here. That's the next step where I install bcrypt.js. OK, so here let me widen up this terminal window here. And I'm going to do npm install bcrypt.js. Okay, so package JSON under dependencies, we have it available here. Okay, good. All right, so we had we have installed that. I'm going to close this terminal window now. So install bcrypt.js. Good. All right. So let me go into documentations for a bcrypt for a second. Um, let me do bcrypt.js. Okay, so this is this is bcrypt, and bcrypt has a method that's called salt, and we are going to be able to generate a salt for it before we hash it. And I, actually, let, let me proceed with this, and then I'll, I'll eventually explain what salt is. So where are we at? Okay, so we're here, right? So I want to generate a salt first. I'm going to do salt. I'm going to do await. Await, and we have to bring in bcrypt first, right, in order to use it. So I'm going to do here. I'm going to do bcrypt require bcrypt.js. Okay, so now I can use the library here. I'm going to do await bcrypt bcrypt has a method called gen salt gen salt i'm going to give it a value of 10 so let's go over here into the documentation and i'm going to look for gen salt gen salt Gent salt here. Okay, so gent salt, when we hash our password, or let me do hash, hash. Okay, so later on, right after I generate the salt, bcrypt also has a method called hash. Hash takes in an argument of, uh, takes in an argument of salt, and a salt makes an additional it, it makes it makes your your password more secure it's just an extra layer of security so let me also actually it'll be probably be better here i'm gonna do what okay okay so here in cryptography cryptography a salt is a random data that is used as an additional input to a one-way function that hashes data, a password or passphrase. Salts are used are used to safeguard passwords in storage. Salts defend against a pre-computed hash attack, such as a rainbow, such as rainbow tables. So this is an extra layer of security. Now, uh, when hashing passwords, sometimes um, my uh, 
setting a salt is not a requirement. However, it is it is really it, it's suggested that you do use it. Now, in the case of Bcrypt JS, by default they 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 set salt to if I don't provide salt, by default it's gonna be they're gonna set it to ten by default. However, like for me. I am still sending it here, just, just I, I guess, just, just in case. Uh, but I just want to make sure that that's set. Uh, but just know that it says it does say in its documentation that if you don't set salt, that it's set by default to a value of ten. Okay, and again, setting a salt is just an an additional layer of security when hashing your password. Okay, so now that we set the salt, I'm gonna do here. Um, do new uh, new user and then password we're going to give the value of await bcrypt and against and again it has a, a method called hash and the first the first value we're going to pass it is the password this fa uh, this password is the password that's coming from here right right here from the from the request body that the user provided okay in plain sight but then the second argument is going to be salt which is this right here okay so this is just going to make our password much more secure and as a matter of fact let me go ahead and let me console log this just so you can see uh, i'm going to do um new user password I'm going to console log this into the console here so you can see how the the, the password is transformed how it's hashed and transformed um, so let me go where are we at uh, okay right here into the client I'm gonna press sign up go to the back end and look at this right here this value right here is the password, but it's hashed. And obviously it's very encrypted, but that's the purpose. That's the purpose of it. See, something like this is is what you want to store in the database. It's not the user's plain uh, password in plain sight. That would be uh, insecure. You don't want to do that. You always want to you want to hash it, okay? Uh, that's one of the the the, the that's that's a great way to store the, the the password like this and then later on when we have to uh, decipher or to uh, read that password what well, we're gonna use um, a compare method which is also part of bcrypt which is gonna compare the user's password from the front end with whatever the password is the hashed password that's stored inside the database is gonna compare that and see if there if it's a match okay so let me remove this console log here now that we know that it is hashed and then uh, let me go let's see generate the salt I generated the salt and the password we hashed it we even console logged it so we can even see prove it and then now we have to save the user in the database all right so finally by the way, this right here, this is our cloud server here, the database that we're using in the cloud. And if I um, if I check our collections, it's empty. There's nothing displayed here. We don't have anything created. So we are. So I just wanted to show you that right now it's empty, but we're gonna see that we're gonna have a new user that's gonna be created, and and we're gonna see it there. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do new uh, await new new user and then save this will save our user into the database okay so let's go ahead sign up okay so now we're going to check inside our database we're going to refresh this and let's see what we get looks like everything went well and it did you see now we got a new user stored inside our database here okay this is the model here that we created it's a user's model and we have all the properties right the row which was set by default to zero we have the username the email and the password again it's hashed here 
It's the hash password. And then the created at and the updated at. Remember, those two properties were created over we're over here in the user model when we set this property here timestamps to true so automatically when a new instance of the user is created each time it's created automatically it's it it, it sets all this the information when it was created the date it was created and all that other good stuff all right so that's great that's good stuff here all right so user and uh, save user and database good all right now we want to finally send a success message to tell the user to sign in, right? So once the user is signed in, we want to send them back to the user. Say everything was successful. You were stored and you were you were re you're successfully registered. Now you can sign in. Okay, so let's go back to the controllers. So right here, we do a response JSON. I'm gonna do a success message. And then I'm going to send registration success. And then please, please sign in. Please log in. Ah, sign in. OK, good. Just like that. All right, all right, all right. Good, 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 good. All right, so the message is being sent now, okay? And also let me sit over here. Uh, let me do, um, yeah, let me do a response. If we get an error, I also wanted to send something here. Response status, uh, there's gonna be a server error. And JSON, do error message and do server error okay okay so now that we send in this response here if everything goes well here and the user saved we're going to send this message here so let's go go ahead and give this a shot and test it out but before i do that um i do let me i'm going to go here to my database and i'm going to delete this right here I want to clear my database again. Okay, so it's cleared. So I just deleted that user and I'm going to create this, uh, another user here. And my assumptions is that this is going to succeed. I'm registering the user as John Doe and all this information. And then I should see a message here at the top over here that's saying exactly the message that I provided in the back end, right? The registration success, please sign in, uh, sign in. So let's see if we get that. And there you go, registration success, please sign in. And how was that able to happen again? Well, that's because again, if everything succeeds here, we're sending back this JSON with this property here, uh, success message back to the front end over here which was the starting point and which uh, of the axios that made the request to our backend okay and which uh, which is going to store the the response coming from the backend inside the response and we're returning the response or back to the component that caught it over here and then it's going to run this block here and over here the response response data success message this is the success message that's coming from the back end this 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 property name must match with this right here from the back end right we just created it and then that's going to store it inside the success message uh, prop here which is the component state property and that is how and that is how the component is able to display the message um, I know it's a lot but I, I wanted to, um, but I wanted to try to explain as much as it can in detail to to see the f to to make sure that you understand the flow of information, how things are kind of flowing, the data is flowing from the front end and back end and back and forth, and not just simply telling you just do this and this and that. So sorry if it doesn't run, but uh, uh, if you don't understand, but believe me, the more you do this, uh, things are start to click automatically. But don't worry if if it seems overwhelming. All right, so that's working. All right, so let's go back over here. Send message. 
so everything worked out fine. But one more thing here. Remember that over here, uh, we had set a condition in our try catch block that if the user, if the email is already exists in the database, we run this this block of code here, right? Which is going to send an error message of email already exists. So let me refresh this database here. Okay. So we have the user, right? And the email. There's one user so far with this email, jdoe at gmail.com. So I want to make sure that that, that that error picks up, that we get that error message if we try to create a new email or register a new email, a new user with that same email. So let's do the same thing here, but I'm going to do Jane Doe this time. And with that same email, jdoe, remember, because that's the one that we have currently in the database. So that should be no go. And I'm going to do ABC, one, two, three. A, B, C, one, two, three. So let's make sure that we get that error message on the front end. And we do. See, email already exists. Good. All right. So that's checked out. All right. So we took care of everything. Um, the only thing I want to do before I finish off, we had we, we took care of everything, everything here. But I, I feel I need to show you guys exactly the flow of data from the moment that we make the request to the, to the moment that the the response is sent from the server to the front end. Um, so let me go here. So API. I'm gonna open up my server. All right. Just stand by for a second here. Okay. Auth routes. The validator. Okay. The middleware's validator. Then the controller. Okay. Yeah. And then sends it back. Okay. So. I want you to see this flow. Try try to see the way data flows uh, through this application. And this is just for sign up. Comp this is just for sign up, the sign up functionality. So this is a sign up component. So this is the front end. So remember that the user, as they're putting in the information uh, in the input fields, this this form data. This is like the component state data. All this 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 information right here is being um, filled in with that user data. Now the moment that the user presses submit, presses the submit button, this function handle submit is being run. It's going to do our client side validation, and then if if everything goes well there, we will this this method sign up method will run here, and this is a sign up a method specifically for API requests, which is over here in our API um, folder sign up. So here in our sign up, we will start setting up our headers for our request. And then we will make our Axios request, which is going to be an, uh, a post request. And we are we want to hit this endpoint API auth sign up. And we're sending off the data here. And then there off it goes to the server. So this file here in server JS, this is the main file on our server. And all this middleware is going to run. And then we have this middleware here, which is checking that that this that this the that this route here, that's this portion matches with the route over here. And when we made our API uh, our API request API auth, right? API auth, and it matches over here. So then it will call this right here, auth routes. And that's over here. At which point we're going to match the last portion of that request. Here we have sign up and it matches with the last portion of this API route, right? Over here, sign up. So there's a match. So at that point, this sign up validator will run to valid, which is right here, right? This is the sign up validator right here. It's checking all the input that's arriving from the user. Okay, the username, email, password. And um, so it's checking all that stuff. And then the next portion here, the validation validator result will run. And that's pretty much take that's that's this right here. So that will check all this the the checks that were made here. And we'll check if there's any errors. If there is an error, if there is an error here, it's going to return the error message with whatever the error was here. Now, continue on with this route. If 
these middlewares here, if they there's no errors, it would then proceed through the pipeline to the next one, which is sign up controller. And that's over here. Sign up controller, which will receive the request response object. And then here we're going to destructure whatever the, uh, the input is from the user uh, from the front end, which was the username, email, and password. We destructure it. And then we will run this try catch block and we start with make, making a, re uh, a query or a request to the database. We're checking if there's an email that, that matches the email that's coming from the user. And if there is a match, then we send them an error. Otherwise, we proceed and we start prepping our user information over here. We set up the username and email, and then and then we have to do we, we generate a salt to 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 before we hash the password. So we hash the password and generate the salt for it, at which case we have all the information ready to send off to the to the database so we await new user and we save that new user to the database and then finally once we save that user we send response over here the success message with registration success and that will be sent off to the axios right, where, right over here where we initially made that request over here and it will be stored in the response here and the response we will return that response back to the component over here in our sign up component over here and then if everything if everything was successful that's where that res that success message is being placed right here and then otherwise we get the error here <laughs> sorry Again, if that's overwhelming, but again, I, it's so important that you see the flow of the data from the moment the user puts in all the data from the user end to the way it flows, goes to the back end, and then it makes making requests to the database, and then finally coming back, returning back to the client. Um, the more you understand that and see it, the way the, the way the data flows, the more the more you become better and more efficient as a program. I can tell you, me personally, um, it was so under, it was so hard for me to understand personally when I watch tutorial videos and understand it. But the more I did it and the more I really tried to understand the way the data flows step by step um, in the process of of this. Uh, the more it, I, I, it, things became much more, or me, I felt much more confident in my ability to code and understand how to put things together because I was able to see things, it, the, see the overall picture as a whole, you know, seeing it from the outside rather than when you're lost and not, especially when you're beginning and seeing from, uh, it was really hard to understand. But that's it for now. Well, we took care of everything. Um, so uh, continue on to the next video.